Hello and welcome to the fifth and second last video in our mini prep buffer mixing series, Buffer PE, aka Buffer 5, or Wash Buffer 2. If you're watching the videos in order, I can hear you sniggering at the irony that I complain about chemistry's naming conventions while simultaneously giving you three names for every buffer. However, chemistry's naming conventions originate from diverging schools of academia, while the mini prep buffer's names originate from competing corporations in the market. I still hear people calling the silica columns queergen columns, which is the same as calling your vacuum a hoover or your hot tub a jacuzzi. While not technically wrong, it does make you sound a bit like a bootlicker. If I were to fall into the trap of inventing my own naming convention for this open source protocol, don't worry I won't, but if I did, it would somehow involve a shout out to Bernboim and Dolly, who discovered alkaline lysis in 1979 and worked with Marco, Chipperfield, and Bernboim to develop the silica column by 1982. We can thank Boom, Salamans, Sol, Jansen, and Werheim van Dillen, and van de Norda for the addition of chaotropic agents to improve purification quality. But at this point we've got more inventors than buffers, and I've really got to work on the history of the mini prep video. To tide you over, I've linked an excellent blog named Bench and Beyond that I used as a source and which sums up what followed. In short, the work of these scientists devolved into an intellectual property battle that led to sufficient patents being published for clever individuals to replicate at home. Even an extended 20 year patent will have expired by now, barring any shenanigans by Big Pharma. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is a mixing video, I should probably start explaining what you're making. Buffer PE is our ethanol wash buffer, for which the ethanol lysis procedure is named. Plasma DNA remains bound to the silica column, while any residual salts dissolve and are washed out when you centrifuge the tubes. I went down the rabbit hole on ResearchGate and I found some people claiming the ethanol also removes the salvation shell surrounding the DNA, permitting the precipitation of the DNA in pellet form. Regardless of mechanism, this is the second wash buffer that we will use before finally reaching our elution step. Unfortunately, the presence of ethanol in your final DNA prep will have significantly negative effects if you plan on doing anything useful with it, from quantification to anything enzymatic. This is why an oven or heat block is one of the required pieces of equipment for mini prep, to evaporate residual ethanol from your centrifugation step. It's a great moment in the protocol for a coffee or lunch break, just remember to wash your hands after handling all of these guanidine solutions. If you're following the video series in order, you've already worked with Trispace and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Check out the first video if you've forgotten. Just because you aren't working with the spooky salts from the last two videos, doesn't mean you should relax on the PPE. Especially while adding acid to the water, wear your gloves, lab coat and goggles, and work in a well-ventilated area. The rest of buffer PE is almost entirely ethanol, another flammable compound that must never be autoclaved. Once diluted to 70%, ethanol is barely irritating to your skin, but in its concentrated form it can be painful, especially if it gets in your eyes. The real risk to mitigate with ethanol is the chance of it reaching its flash point, so be sure to handle it in a well-ventilated area that's cool and away from open flames. We're going to make double the quantity of buffer PE than we do of any other buffer, since we use almost twice the volume than in the other steps. As such, the demonstrator will be making 200 mils of buffer PE, and will include the conversion from one litre of stock on screen. Starting with 30 mils of autoclaved pure water, we're going to add 0.24 grams of Tris base crystals, mixing slowly to allow them to dissolve. Heating is optional to speed up this process, but not necessary for such a low concentration of salt. We'll next adjust the pH down to 7.5 using diluted hydrochloric acid, adding a tiny bit of trispace if we overshoot. I know I'm starting to probably sound like a broken record player to those following along the series in order, but if this is the first video you're watching from us, let me throw in a gentle reminder about diluting your hydrochloric acid. Add the acid to the water. I know some people may feel confident about adding concentrated acid directly to the buffer mixer to balance the pH, but this makes it genuinely difficult to get the pH exactly right, and you should absolutely do this in a fume cupboard. Diluting your acid allows you to take your time while balancing, but dilute it too far and you'll really struggle to keep yourself within your maximum volume. The maximum volume here is 40 mils before we start exceeding our allocation. This is because the next step is to add 160 mils of ethanol. Since our final volume will be 200 mils, and this needs to be an 80% ethanol solution, the math is relatively easy, even for us biologists. 
As long as you didn't dilute your acid too far, your total volume should now be just under the 200ml mark. Use sterile purified water to bring the volume up to the 200ml mark on the beaker. Do not autoclave this buffer, it does not need sterilization and will catch fire. Simply add 15ml to a falcon tube for immediate use, and add the rest to a large sterile bottle that can go in the fridge. I think that this is one of the longer lasting buffers, but I've yet to spend time on an experiment to prove this. If anything, this buffer is more likely to run out first, especially if you mix the same volume as the rest of your buffers. Fortunately, it's also really easy to mix and contains cheap reagents, so we generally remix it at the same time as all the others just for the sake of good practice. We'll see you next time when you wish to do the same. Biofoundry would like to thank Dr. Nicholas Coleman and OpenWetWear.org for their open sharing of this knowledge. We'd also like to thank all the aforementioned scientists who dedicated their lives to the discovery of this radically important process for biotechnology. While not quite on the level of the PCR reaction, the plasma mini prep is truly the bread and butter of anyone working with single-celled organisms. As we release more episodes on genetic engineering and synthetic biology, you'll start to realise just how necessary this process is to almost everything you do. I'll also promise to one day work on a much more fleshed out history of the development of the mini prep, once our team works its way through the huge backlog of video guides that our website will need in order to be useful to you, dear viewer. Join us next episode for the final chapter in the mini prep buffer mixing series, where we will cover not one, not two, but three different recipes. Okay, one of the recipes is pure water, so I guess that doesn't count. Two recipes and water, next time. See you then.